Probably the biggest, most wonderful improvement to Excel 2013 is the Flash Fill tool. This saves a massive amount of work with text manipulation functions and even some mathematical functions. Let's demonstrate how it works and then you can have a play and see for yourself how wonderful it is. We're going to use the sample data file and we'll insert a new column to the left of column E. Now all I need to do here for the flash fill is provide an example. So if I were to put Mrs. P as my example value in E2 and then go up to data and choose flash fill, you'll see the keyboard shortcut there is control E. What Excel does is it then fills the rest of that column using your pattern. So it says, ah, you used the title and used the first letter of their surname. So it does that all the way through. Miss C, Mr. S, Miss L. It's even clever enough to spot De Silva and put Mr. D, S. Now there is a little pop out option for flash fill where we can accept the suggestions or undo. Well, let's undo and try a little slightly different thing. Let's try Wendy T H. So that's their first name and the first two letters of their town, flash fill. But this time it's not been so clever. What it's done is it's taken the first two letters from the house because that's the nearest column to it. So let's undo that and let's make it T-H-I-R. So the first four letters of the town. So then when we do flash fill, it's not so confused and it manages to spot the first four letters of the town. Undo, undo. So it is very clever and will save a lot of text functions. So let's revert this back to Mrs. W. Parker. Flash fill. And it knows we want the title, the first initial, and then the surname. Now we can see it in action doing just as clever things over here with the postcode. Let's insert another column. And I give it an example of Y04, which is the first part of the postcode for the first person. Flash fill. And it then knows I want the first part of the postcode, not the first three characters, because what you'll notice here, where we have a four letter prefix, is it spots the four letter prefix and puts TS24, not TS2. So it's not just taking the first three characters, it sees you want everything to the gap and pulls everything to the gap. We could do a similar thing with the telephone number. If I just wanted the dialing code, 01845, and then flash fill, it pulls out the first part of the telephone number, regardless of the number of characters. There's five there, but we get to this one, there's only four. So it knows I want everything to the gap again. I love this flash fill. Saves a lot of function work. Take the email, insert. What if I were trying to extract the prefix, so the post office address? Let's try wendy.parker, flash fill, and it doesn't quite get what I'm after. It assumes I want wendy.the surname, not this prefix here. So let's do the undo on the flash fill. Now we can trick it not to look in at the first name and the surname by actually inserting a column here, which gives us a blank column. So when the flash fill looks to see where it's getting that information from, it can't see the first name and the surname column but it can see the email column and then might just follow my pattern. Let's go back to wendy.parker, flash fill, and we can then see it now spots the pattern, which is everything before the at symbol. Again, we could do that with a function, but it would involve a number of functions to be able to locate the position of the at and how many characters to extract. With the flash fill, it's straightforward. I simply give it a pattern, choose flash fill, and it fills to the bottom of that column. As we've seen, it's not always getting the pattern, but with a couple of little tricks, we can make it get the pattern that we're after and then it will do what we want. So that's the greatest new invention for Excel 2013, Flash Fill.